2020 was a pretty good year for horror movies, but 2021 is shaping up to be even better. Between anticipated sequels, ridiculously sounding remakes, and some new original ideas from some of the finest minds in the genre, there is plenty to get excited about going in to this year. But there are some rumours circulating which shed a bit more light on these upcoming movies. From leaked character returns to teased announcements, it all sounds incredibly fascinating. Of course, they are just rumours to take all of the following with a big heaping of salt, but I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 9 horror movie rumours you need to know. Number 9. Hoffman Returns in Spiral Unsurprisingly, the plot for the upcoming Saw spin-off Spiral from the Book of Saw has remained largely under wraps. And honestly, this is the shakiest rumour on this list, which is why we're going first with it, but it's still really interesting, and who knows, might eventually come true. Because rumours out there are suggesting that Mark Hoffman, aka Jigsaw's most prominent apprentice in the original series, might be making a return for this new flick. Now this mostly stems from a few whispers on the internet and the fact that the actor did appear on the cast list on the IMDb page, but it is important to know that pretty much anybody can edit that information, so it's not like it was leaked by a credible insider, or at least not yet. Still, this would be a huge win with fans should it happen, and ACT is a great way to bridge the previous series with the potential new one. And while you might say that Hoffman was of course implied to have been killed in the final chapter after being locked in the iconic bathroom, when it comes to Saw, unless you see a dead body, I don't think you can rule anything out. After all, Eric Matthews, of all people, survived being trapped in that bathroom, and we've seen Hoffman survive traps before, so it's not exactly unlikely that he would find a means of escape. Number 8. J.J. Abrams' Constantine Time has been kind to Constantine. The Keanu Reeves starring adaptation wasn't exactly perfect, but it was an enjoyably dark romp, and the character has only become more popular in the years since that flick. And now, after a wonky TV adaptation, it seems as though the franchise is set for a big screen return. That's because rumours circulated last year that J.J. Abrams and his production company Bad Robot had been tapped by Warner Brothers to deliver another live-action adaptation of this franchise. Not much is known at the moment, admittedly, and it's kind of unclear whether this is going to be a total reboot or a weird continuation of that first movie. That said, though, in their write-up on these rumours, Bloody Disgusting did point out that Keanu Reeves himself has expressed interest in returning to this role, saying that the world of Constantine is something that he loves and something that he wants to explore further on down the line. So if he's already up for it and the Keanu Reeves resurgence is definitely happening with John Wick, The Matrix 4 and everything else, why not give him another crack at the character? Number 7. Ryan Gosling in The Wolfman Tragically, the Dark Universe is dead. Long live the Dark Universe. After falling apart after just one movie, Universal immediately switched gears to offer a different approach to their classic movie monster output. Going back to the low-budget horror roots with The Invisible Man, director Lee Whannell pretty much just came in and showed everyone what Universal should be doing with their classic stable of characters. It's probably no surprise then that after the success of that movie that the director has once again been tapped by Universal to bring another classic property back from the dead. As a result, his version of The Wolfman is currently in production, and while we don't know too much about specifics or even the plot, a time period or anything like that, we do have one pretty solid rumour that's been doing the rounds in regards to casting. And that's the suggestion that Ryan Gosling has signed to appear in the title role. Reported first by Deadline last year, apparently his inclusion has encouraged Universal to fast-track this production, with Lee Whannell back to direct and write a treatment. However, according to the site, apparently Lee Whannell wasn't exactly chomping at the bit to make this Wolfman movie, and needed a bit of convincing in the fact that he and Gosling have always wanted to collaborate on something that might have sealed the deal. Still, if The Invisible Man is anything to go on, then Gosling is more than in safe hands. Number 6. 
Dr. Loomis is back for Halloween Kills. David Gordon Green's Halloween brought the franchise back in a big way, and all it had to do was discard decades of canon and ignore pretty much every single other movie apart from the very first one. A direct sequel to the original movie, it spent much of its runtime getting people caught up on what's changed in the years between that first movie and now, and reintroducing a bunch of fan favourite characters. And apparently the same will be done again for this sequel. That's because, according to some reports, the one and only Dr. Loomis will be back for Halloween Kills. These originally started circulating after test screenings were held early last year, with some people getting an early look at the movie. Now at this point I do know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Josh, how the hell can Dr. Loomis come back when the late great Donald Pleasance is no longer around to play him? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure, but chances are, because apparently he's only in for a scene or so, they might either recast the role or just use a stunt double, or maybe go down the Star Wars route and CGI the actor's face onto someone else. I really hope they do not do that. Still, like I said, it's only reported to be a small cameo anyway, but either way, it looks like we're going to get more Doc Loomis in the next movie. Number five, Joe Hill's Maximum Overdrive remake. Out of all the horror films to remake, I don't think Maximum Overdrive is at the top of anyone's list. In a way, it's kind of one of those movies that simultaneously does and absolutely does not need a remake in any shape or form. The idea of killer trucks can be scary, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jewel is really, really good. But Maximum Overdrive is just so shoddy that I don't know why they would bother trying to remake it. People only love it as a so bad it's good property. Even Stephen King, who directed the movie, doesn't like the finished piece, primarily because he was incredibly high on cocaine while filming it. However, Stephen King's son, Joe Hill, does think there's potential in the property and has expressed his interest in remaking his father's movie. In an interview with Mick Garris, Hill stated, quote, if someone offered me the chance to write and direct a relaunch of Maximum Overdrive, I'd jump at that in a second. He went on to describe as well how he envisions the film would go. If you ask me though, I think it's a win-win either way. Just let him do it, because on the one hand, he might do the material justice and make something surprisingly good, and on the other, he might just fall flat on his face like his dad did, and then we've got this weird case of history repeating itself, and Maximum Overdrive just is funnier by association. Number four, an eighth Tremors movie. Tremors has bizarrely become one of the longest running horror franchises of the day. The first movie was released in 1990, and the most recent installment, Terror's Shrieker Island, was released last October. And if you thought that was the end, it doesn't look like this series is going away anytime soon. That's because Michael Gross, who has portrayed military man Burt Gummer since the first flick, has hinted that there will be more Tremors to come. In an interview with the Boo Crew podcast, Gross said, quote, The door is still open for an eighth Tremors. It may seem unlikely by what people see on the screen, but it is possible. There could be an eighth, and if there were, and it were an interesting story, I would be up for it because Bert is always a great deal of fun. Now, if you've seen Tremors Shriek Ryland, you might think this quote sounds a bit strange because his character actually did die, but who knows, this is the ninth film at this point if we're going into the next one, so anything can happen, I guess. Maybe we have a flashback, maybe we have some time set before, I don't know, I don't know what they're gonna do, but it might be happening. It all depends on how much fans want it, but at this point, why stop? Number three, Evil Dead rises again. Like the Deadites themselves, it seems at this point that the Evil Dead franchise will just never ever properly be put down. And for a big fan like me, I'm more than happy with that fact. Still though, with a complete a trilogy, a full TV series, and a remake under its belt, as well as star Bruce Campbell officially retiring from his role as Ash, it all seemed for a little while like the franchise might be completely done. However, Bruce Campbell has confirmed that a brand new movie titled Evil Dead Rise is is in the early stages of production and has currently courted a director and writer. While he did say that the movie is still in the draft stage, he did reveal a few tidbits about the plot and what we can expect. Namely, that it's going to star a female hero, that it's going to take place in a city rather than in a cabin, and that it won't be connected to the first remake from 2013. Now, I know what you're thinking yet again. You're thinking, Josh, if Bruce Campbell has confirmed this, why the hell is it on a list 
about rumors. And to that I say, you're not wrong, but at the same time, if you've been around this franchise as long as I have, you'll know by now not to trust anything that Bruce Campbell or Sam Raimi says about this series. I mean, for the longest time, it was confirmed that Sam Raimi was off somewhere writing a proper Evil Dead 4, and then for a while there was going to be a sequel to the remake, which didn't happen, and now we're here. So even though Bruce Campbell is out here talking it up, for my money, I'll believe it when I'm sitting down in a theater or in my home to actually press play and watch it. Number two, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's 2021 sequel restarted production. While not much is known about it at the moment, Legendary Entertainment has announced officially a brand new version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and even given us this sick poster to look at while we wait for a trailer. Despite it definitely coming and coming soon though, Variety reported last year that the production on this sequel hasn't been the smoothest. In fact, allegedly the production team actually had to restart production after one week of filming because the original directors were sacked from the project due to creative differences. The directors in question were Andy and Ryan Torhill. Now even though there is a new director, this doesn't exactly bode well, because previously producer Fed Alvarez had said this about the movie, quote, the Torhills version is exactly what the fans want. It's violent, exciting, and so depraved that it will stay with you forever, end quote. So yeah, apparently their version was exactly what the fans wanted, but not what Legendary wanted, because now they're not directing the movie, so I don't really know how well that bodes for the thing we're actually going to get. Now though, David Blue Garcia is on to direct the project, and like Halloween, which I mentioned earlier, this new sequel is planning to essentially erase most of the sequels after the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and act as a direct sequel to that, even though that's kind of already happened with Texas Chainsaw and then with Leatherface before, this franchise has already done this, but hopefully this time it'll be better. Number one, Scream 5 and the return of Matthew Lillard. The new Scream movie, confusingly just titled Scream, has already confirmed that Connie Cox, Neve Campbell, and David Arquette are all reprising their roles from the original series. However, one actor who fans absolutely want to see return is Matthew Lillard, who played the original killer Stu in the first movie. And despite having his head crushed by a falling TV, rumors are suggesting that he might actually be back for this sequel. Set photos have apparently shown a version of Stu's house from that original movie on location. And there is the fact that Stu was supposed to return in the original series in Scream 3 before that plot line was eventually scrapped. So it's not like they haven't been open to a return in the past. Lillard himself has also bigged up these theories as well, confirming that he would jump at the chance to return if he was offered the role. He's also commented on his character's supposed death, tweeting out, quote, I mean, it was just a TV, right? You'd think he'd survive. End quote. As mentioned, he's already stated that he's absolutely available to reprise the role should anybody ask, so I feel like it would be a huge missed opportunity if they didn't capitalize on that interest. Thus, it seems that all fans can do is hope that the filmmakers have listened and granted Lillard's wish to return to the franchise. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. How many of these huge horror movie rumors do you want to actually come true? And are there any big juicy ones that I've missed off here? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more deliciously gory news and lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.